Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Arrogant Web TV. We were going to do a, yeah, nice, nice faces, Joe. We got it. We got it. We were going to do an Air Gun Guys tonight with Travis, but he had a, uh, an appointment, a meeting, a fun thing he's got to go do, which is fine. So Joe uh, graciously decided to go ahead and come on up here and hang out with us tonight. So Joe, how you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing great, man. We're doing pretty awesome. You know, it's been, I think we're still trying to recover from the Air Gun Expo, frankly. I know it's been a month already, uh, or pretty much close to it, but um, that took a lot out of us. That week was a was a pretty uh, intense week of air gunning for sure, man. Yeah, that was a that was a good one though. It was a good yeah. one. So uh, we've got a lot of good feedback, and I think we're looking to see what we can do about putting together another one. So I'm excited to see what we can do there. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you'll be able to come back and hang out again. Oh yeah. This oh, time we'll let you be able to stay here at the ranch, so you don't have to drive back and forth. <laughs> So, all right. So we had a couple of topics I wanted to get into tonight. Um, first thing, I, and since you're here, I'm going to ask your advice on some of this stuff because, uh, yes, you're an air gunner. Yes, you've done some content creation, but you're also uh, a, a sponsor and a partner for Airgun Web. So, you know, you you wear a lot of hats there. So let me ask you some questions uh, from the sponsorship um, perspective, if you don't mind. All right. You, you can always pass. You say, uh, talk to Jay you know, if you if you need to, right? <laughs> um, all right. So as you know, uh, we ran into some snags and we keep going back to this. And this idea that you've got uh, these entities like a YouTube or Facebook that can just say, bye-bye, and you're done. Um, and that, that, you know, is, is I think it's an inevitability frankly, that um, at some point they're going to flip a switch and just say, bye, y'all, we're done. Um, right. And, I, you know, what I'm trying to do uh, with both, uh, like, for example, Gateway to Air Guns and my own channel is to insulate us from that, um, from that inevitability. So, you know, <clears throat> I was doing some uh, numbers on the GTA, for example, and if you guys out there don't know what the GTA GTA is, go look it up. It's gateway to airguns.org. Uh, hey there, Daniel. Um, and, you know, I, I revamped the banner system like at the first of the month and they already emailed me and said, hey, uh, you need to up to the next level because uh, our numbers say you're going to be serving 2 million plus banners this month. Whoa. Um, yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> from an advertiser's perspective, I don't think you guys really advertise there yet. Um, we'll work on Jay later. Uh, but, but, you know, when you're looking at uh, 2 million plus banner ads, that's not insignificant. Uh, right. In a month. Uh, that, that's a lot. And so one of the ways I want to insulate our content is by really you leveraging places like Gateway to Air Guns as a place where people can come and get all of that in, that information and, and like in our forum. And what do you think of that versus a YouTube or a Facebook kind of a concept? Uh, well, you know, I've, yeah, I've been with the Gate, Gateway Air Guns. Gosh, I've been on, I've been a member since, I don't know, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I used to go there a lot. I mean, I used to just, that's, my life was on gateway to air guns. I'd, I'd come home, say hi to the family. I'd jump on the computer and I'd be on the forum. I'd be on that forum and a couple others. I'd like for hours just soaking up information. And yeah. so, I mean, it gets, it, you know, and, and gateway's huge. I mean, it gets a lot of people going there. I know a lot of people still go there and they may not become members, but they do, you know, go as a visitor. Yeah. Um, and the way, things are going with social media, it's definitely nice to have a backup. Because um, what happened at the expo, it happened again. It could happen anytime, anywhere, with yeah. any social platform. It's, you know, it, it's bound to happen to someone on a major level. Yeah, and I mean, I had my channel just axed, you know, just summarily terminated back in, what was it, 2000. 
was it 18? Yeah. I remember, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So, you know, it was like it was there and then it wasn't. Uh, and that was brutal. Um, that was absolutely brutal. Um, let's see. <laughs> yep. Uh, so I think that if we can get, um, create that space to be really a repository, a more stable repository, uh, I am hopeful that people will come use it because they're really, that's going to be the key. Um, and I hope it doesn't get to the point where the only reason people go use it is because these other places just cut them off. I, I don't want that, but I mean, I've seen that sort of happen. That's the way it sort of wants to go at times. Right. And if we can have it go in a different direction, that'd be great. Um, so the other question I was thinking about, um, and again, want to get your opinion on it, you know, um, we got a question. We'll get there here in a minute. Uh, we have, there, there are a lot of different contributors out there. And one of the things Travis and I are talking about is what is a fair way to make at least a portion of the GTA available to other content creators. Um, and we're, we're looking to, and here's what I was thinking. So for you guys watching or Joe, um, as a content creator, air gunner, and vendor, uh, and sponsor, I want you to think this over. We're thinking about creating a code of conduct. That uh, uh, say that again, or what? A code of conduct okay. where contributors agree to a particular code of conduct, uh, things they agree to do and things they agree not to do. I look, I don't ever want to see the GTA become just vendor bashing or brand bashing, any of that stuff. Right. Every product can have a bad day, right? And so one bad day does not make a terrible line or a terrible brand or right. a terrible service department because one person had a bad experience. You know, having worked service and trained service people, I've come to know something and that is often that the customer is wrong. <laughs> not right <laughs> so we try and work from the perspective that the customer's always right but the truth is oftentimes they're just wrong right. um, so but we're thinking about creating a code of conduct that other people the Hajimoto's the C Scallies the guys that may want to yourself as a contributor side that may want to have their own space there could do so what do you, what do you think of that idea that'd be great you have a, the, that part of the GTA, you know, dedicated to like that. That way, you know, there is another place to go to, to look at these videos and to learn information and to, um, you know, just see what's going on, to watch people shoot, you know, see new rifles, see old rifles, hell, see, you know, see little tips and tricks of the trade, you know. Yeah. Um, so one of, the, one of the other things I was thinking about implementing as a criteria, and this is probably going to be a sticking point, but um, there are different video sharing platforms. I use Vimeo because it's a professional paid service. Right. Okay? I have a contract with them. As long as I stay within and their guidelines, you can actually call them, talk to them. They'll give you specifics. I ask them about hunting videos. Does it violate their terms of service? No, it doesn't. Now, you know, I don't know how they feel about the videos where you're shooting Tannerite and blowing up 30 hogs 30 feet in the air. That may be a little extreme, uh, but, you know, actual legitimate hunting videos, they saw no problem with. But at least I could get somebody on the phone or via email that would answer these terms of use questions that's impossible with Facebook and YouTube. Uh, oh, you yeah. think? <laughs> yeah. So and it's a con it's a contractual agreement. So I pay them and it's really affordable. It's like 200 bucks a year and I can upload 20 gigs a week, which is bad. a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I up I just uploaded, or the other day we uploaded all of the live studio stuff um, that we captured, just the raw footage, you know, with the little black and green bar at the bottom that we right. recorded, uploaded to Vimeo. I didn't use up all my space for the week. So I mean you can you can make that 20 gigs a week work. Um, and I don't know anybody that I don't know anybody that releases at a higher volume, say that we, at least we do, or we used to do, we never hit our limit. 
So uh, I think that that's doable. That's the lowest professional or paid thing, but 200 bucks a year, I think to have my stuff secured that I could stream my material. Like if I publish, I'm going to be publishing on Gateway to Air Guns back on my own website. I'm going to embed it from Vimeo. So if YouTube and Facebook go stupid, all right. of the links keep working. That's good. You know, and that's so that's, I, I think that we're looking to make like a code of conduct. And then one of the requirements is that you stream from Vimeo versus yeah. these other, what do you think of that? Do you think that's too restrictive? Well, I mean, it could be, and it, it, I mean, you know, some guys who may not be willing to, um, to put up forth the effort um, that you're doing with Vimeo, but again, you know, if it's a stable platform and they're real good with us, as long as we don't do something stupid, then I don't see why not. Yeah, I think that it really it is about uh, preserving the integrity of the content over the long term is what I'm looking right. for. Guys, I know we've had some questions come up. Um, the, uh, I wanted to, uh, what we're talking about here for you guys that have just joined us is Gateway to Air Guns. We're looking to implement and use that as a more secure way of creating a larger repository, at least a section that's open to uh, contributors that would that would be willing to agree to a code of conduct and also some you know logistical stipulations uh, to be able to post their stuff there as a means to have you know something that won't disappear in an instant. Um, that website is uh, hosted on our own leased server. It's not part of you know Amazon's web services or Facebook or GoDaddy. It's hosted actually at we lease a server for that purpose so it's, it's not this sort of situation you may find other places so there is a there's contractual agreements in all these places nothing's done free it's all paid um well, do you think if you get something like going that, like that with um the gateway that maybe vimeo would strike some kind of deal with you you know i i, I think so right now when i was streaming uh, I did a couple things when I was pushing everything from my Vimeo, from Vimeo, embedding everything from Vimeo, which I'm going to go back to that. But when I was embedding everything from Vimeo, I, I saw that my YouTube views went down because if I embed on, say, GTA from YouTube, my numbers will climb, right, uh, on YouTube because YouTube sees those embeds as views. Um, but when I went to Vimeo, I was doing 40 or 50,000 views a month off Vimeo. So that was just web embeds that I was getting. So, you know, I think that um, if we're doing a lot of traffic like that, I would imagine, especially uh, if we're promoting them the way we are, I think that they probably possibly could. It would be, I think, a good way for them to have a, a, maybe a stronger foothold in the in the outdoors and sporting goods, sporting market. Yeah. So it could be. Could be. I like their platform. It's very good. And the other thing I talked to them about right recently was um, they have the ability to do live streaming like we were doing in Facebook, but okay. we can embed that right on our own web page. Oh, nice. So you would go to Gateway, of Air, Gateway Air Guns and watch Air Gun Expo right there on the page. You wouldn't have to find it. Where's the link coming up? Where's the next feed? Okay. Just one dedicated page to that event for the entire event. So, you know, these are the kind of things I think would give us a stronger foundation in how we're delivering content and information. So I know that's not air gun stuff, guys. And if that's overly boring, uh, please forgive me. But um, as a content creator that sees my life sort of hanging in the proverbial balance, I'm always looking for ways uh, to try and have things more stable. So. That's what we're looking to do. Right. So we got some questions, Joe. You want to answer some questions? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, we've got a Carlos. or Yeah, Carlos is asking. Uh, and I say, I'll read his question. Hopefully I, I can read tonight. Um, personally, which do you prefer over the 177 and 22 caliber? Asking because recently I've been hitting pigeons with my hot sound 177 but they've been flying off. But with my Diana Airbug 22, it knocks them down. So what do you think about that? Well, 
use the right caliber for the right for the job. I mean, the 22s knocked them down better than use that. Yeah. If you're going to use 177, you better make your shots count. Head, yeah. back of the neck, um, the neck, period. The yeah, spine, a good spine shot will, will, will fan that tail real fast. Yeah. And if you're hitting in the, um, if you're going for a heart and you make sure you're dead center and you get through that breast meat and that wishbone. Yeah, I mean, I would the plate, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I do. I know what you're talking about. So I would say that if you're finding that type of, um, if you're finding that the 22 is working better, stick with that. It sounds like you're 177. Uh, Joe, you hunt with a 177 all the time, but it ain't factory. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to ask that too. What 177 are you using? How fast is it going? What size yeah. pellet you put? Are you using hollow points? Are you using poly mags? Better be using poly mags in Hades. There you go. Um, are you just using the dome pellet? I mean, it, uh, that all matters too. I mean, I could knock pigeons down with my with a stock 177 rotter shooting ultra shocks at 20 yards. Yeah. It just knocks it down. Yeah. Yeah. So it, all of that stuff does matter. I think shot placement, doves are tougher than you might think. Yeah. Especially if you hit yeah. them at range. If you're hitting them at 75 and 80 yards, you've lost a lot of yeah. energy. They can take a shot. Damn. I'm trying to come outside because it's nice. Now the wind's beating me up. Yeah, wind's picking up. Um, Jared's asking if I can, if we can go over the MP40 CO2 BB gun. You know, that's one of the ones I haven't shot yet, but I've asked Umrex multiple times for it. So uh, stay tuned. Once I get one, we'll go over it. There you go. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, a uh, person saying they just added the GTA to their favorites. That's awesome. Um, Good. Let's see. Sorry, I gotta go. I gotta go to my other studio, you know, the bedroom. Okay, in the bedroom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, Jared's asking again, do you, do you have the most effective BB for my air gun for pigeons? Oh, well, uh, you want All right, I'm in the other studio. You're in the other <laughs> studio? So uh, we got another question uh, asking me uh, and you, Joe, uh, could you and your guests give opinions on the best six gun replica and what company does the most replicas in general? Umarex. Uh, Umarex, yeah, that was pretty easy. Yeah, Umarex, that's an easy one. I um, want I want a six-shooter replica, but I don't want to shoot BBs. I want to have a rifle barrel so I can shoot pellets. I want they one. They have those. Bit. They have those. I know. I've been looking. I just, I just you don't. Know what, you know what I got? I got something for you. If I can find it. If I can find it, I'll send it to you. Uh, it is... I can't believe I'm, gonna tell, I'm doing this publicly. I'm gonna send. <laughs> I'm sending Joe a care package here shortly. Um, I got and this was given to me by Gletcher uh, back in the day. They had a gun that was. They couldn't sell it because it's too expensive. And what oh, it is, it's it was like it was a six. Uh, it's like a three fifty seven. I think it's like that's a, It can't be Smith and Wesson because Umrex has that license, right? But it's right. that style. Uh, it's not a Colt single action style. It's the regular three foot seven revolver. Okay. And it, has, it has a Lothar Walther barrel in it. No way. Yes, sir. <laughs> so if I can find that, I think I know where it is. It's sitting huh. in Iconics. See, that's something that I think uh, I'd rather have you shoot it than just sitting at the seat. Man. <laughs> I, I I need to I need to just come down there all covert like when you guys yeah. are sleeping, just hook up hook up to the conics and lift it up in the air and what, take what it you need away. to do is rent an expedition and just drive down. Oh, I, I got the down. I got the navigator. I can fill a lot it's in there. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. So Rick's conexes are amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's air gun nirvana in each one of those conexes. So um, and of course we have the question again, Joe. Any idea when the supply of ammo for air guns is going to be back? I think Paramount shelves are about empty. <laughs> hey, you know our contract. We're not supposed to ask those questions. I'm gone. Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, yeah. I'll let that go. Um, we got a container coming in, I think, next week. But um, it's it's not a very big shipment. Um, and it's allocated. But, um, it, but it's, uh, they're always allocated. I, I think I think Airgun Web has allocation on that, too. Uh, I think. <laughs> yes. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, it, it's coming. We're trying to get a container a month. We're trying to get a container a month. Heck, it's gotten to the point now where um, you need it. Um, JSB won't even won't even um, sell pills in certain certain countries. They can't. They just can't do it. Wow, it's bad. And then um, I know me and Jay talk about talked about this today, and I always bring it up. It's like we always get these new customers. Everyone wants to be a customer now, and everyone has a store now. It's like Jesus, you guys, it's killing me here. But you know, it's good to have the customer base. But um, these people are waiting months. You know, five to six months for air guns, air rifles, uh, scopes. You know, ammunition. So these yeah. poor guys, you know, they won't they won't turn a profit for another six months. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, yeah. Zach is asking, could the MP40 take down a pigeon? I mean, could it possibly? Should I? Should you try? No. Uh, leave the BB guns for shooting. Play, yeah. play in the backyard. Don't try not with them. Yeah. Um, uh, here's a good question. Uh, is barrel polishing a good way to increase accuracy? Not lapping, just polishing. Are there any downfalls to doing this? What do you think, Joe? I know several people who polish their barrels. It helps with the, any imperfections in there, too. It's not, not as well as hot lapping will, but, you, you know, do you polish a barrel that's accurate? Probably not, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, leave it alone. You know, this is, in the air gun world, if it, if it works, don't don't fix it. Yeah. Um, not if it's broke, because we still got to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, if you're shooting slugs, yeah, I definitely would say if you if you want to polish a barrel, polish it. It helps with the leading um, that happens with the slugs. I would also say if you're shooting slugs, see you want to lube your slugs. Really? Not, yeah, I lube my slugs. Huh. It helps. My 172 went through a whole year of shooting. I shot, God, I shot hundreds and hundreds, if not close to thousands of rounds to that darn thing. And I pulled a swab through. It was barely dirty. That's cool. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. That's so, good to know. I mean, I know, and I know a bunch of competitive pellet shooters who lube too. And they say there's nothing, there's nothing better than lubing. But, you know, it depends on you, your rifle, and what you're shooting. And if you care, yeah, <laughs> I don't care <laughs> enough to take two hours of polish that barrel. <laughs> I used to do the polishing like Tom Gaylord taught me, which was the br the bronze brush and the JB bore paste, right? On that, and that actually does help. But now, let me say this, and I have a I have a Daniel. If, if you need an origin, I got five of them in the Connex, bro, ready to buy right now. Ergonproshop.com in stock. Yeah. I got. Hammers in stock. I got Beeman Commanders in stock. I got Jeez. Beeman 1358s in stock. I got Jeez. SWAs in stock. And I've got Big Bore Ammo in stock. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking for stuff, uh, don't forget www.airgunproshop.com. I almost forgot. My wallet just folded into itself. <laughs> <trying to look laughs> <laughs> I even have a couple air arms in stock. So anyway, um, Avengers on order. <laughs> like everybody else uh, i used to um i used to do that all the time specifically with um like the chinese guns right because like the tech force guns this is going way back uh, oh, yeah is, the tech force is just a rebranded beeman uh it's all it is and the beemans are rebranded sag a uh, shanghai air gun group uh, okay yeah. so beeman marksman so not the not the HW Beamans, but the but the other ones, um, and those those barrels are notoriously horrible. Now, if uh -huh. you polish them, they they actually come to life and they're okay. But out of the gate, oh, they're rusty and nasty and pitted. And it's a it's two thousand rounds manually shooting it before you get the thing where it'll shoot well. Yeah. So if you polish it, you can skip all that. So it gives you a jump start uh, with a barrel that's a little pitted, and nasty, and gross. Um, hmm. It helps. It helps you. But if you have like a Lothar Walther barrel, yeah, I would. I wouldn't polish it. I'd shoot it, see what it's doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, exactly. I mean, clean guys, it real good. Clean it. it. <laughs> Patches. Uh, well, you know, that kind that of thing. Be, that's a good um, question. I'm going to ask you now. I'll uh -oh. ask everyone. How many people actually clean their barrels when they get their rifles? <laughs> Never. Dude, I, never. I, I am not gonna lie. I'll get a rifle and go, oh, this damn thing shoots good. <laughs> yeah. shoot. And then I when my first Maximus, I bought the European uh, model. 
and it was shooting good. Then I cleaned it. That barrel was never the same, ever. It was I, weird. I, I, look, I just shoot them. If they don't shoot well, then I'll run. I actually use um, the bore whips. Yes. I, use, I pull those through. I use um, MP5 oil from Air Venturi. Pull that mm -hmm. through. That tends to pull the lead out really well. Yeah. Uh, and you can reuse the bore whips. So I use those. Um, yeah. The bore whips are great. Yeah. I don't go to the brass brush and JB bore pace unless that's the last resort. Um, that I, if that's what I'll do, if I can't, if it doesn't work any other way, then I'll try that. But usually at that point, it, it, it ain't gonna shoot. Yeah. I mean, that's what I found. I got some more questions here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Daniel said, look, Daniel, call me uh, tomorrow. I don't know why you're having issues with the website. I just got an order in while we were on the show here. So um, yeah, I mean, Happy to help you out over the phone, no problem. Um, let's see, questions here. What's the best lubricant to use for pellets, Joe? Honestly, I use the um, the, the black and yellow can of the um, WD-40 silicone spray. Okay, there you go. I know people use Slick 50. Yeah. I have a bunch of others, but I use, the, I use that, and man, a little bit goes a long way, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll use, I'll, I have a JSB-10, of course, yep. and I, yeah. I'll put my, you know, I'll spray the foam, then I'll yeah. put the slugs in there with another foam cover in the lid, and I'll just kind of roll them around in there, yeah. and then I, then I'll size them, and then um, I'll either put them back in there, <laughs> or then yeah, them. sizing, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> welcome to the world of slugs, especially exotic um, calibers. Yeah, but um, I see. And, Makes sense. and that that's that um WD forty silicone is some nice stuff. It, okay, it's really good stuff. I think Doesn't that sounds like. It. Either. That sounds like a good uh, video to try with and without. <clears throat> I may do some of that because I've got those slugs. I have a very limited supply of those 177 JSB knockout slugs. Dude, I'm um, looking at my last like 100 in each 10. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like how much more can I salvage? I'm like, I'm trying to reuse them. I shoot them, run down, <laughs> catch them in mid-flight, go, oh yeah, you would have hit the target and run back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, back to the keep people, people watch YouTube. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. He, I'll keep using YouTube until they cut me off or cut us yeah. off. But, um, I'm going to have every, I'm going to have something in place in multiple layers well in advance of that ever happening. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, gosh, the, there we're getting more people online and more questions here, Joe. Um, we catch up here. Um, uh, HW 97K 177 tends to run better if you clean it with a boar snake after every 50 or so shots. You know, every gun's a little different. I would yeah. say if you find what works, do it. Uh, but these things, boy, you talk about. Uh, each of these models having a life of their own. Boy, do they ever. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. David's got a good question here. I've got some rust and pitting on the surface of an old Springer barrel. What's the best way to remove it? Um, I use a combination of stuff. I'll start with MP5 oil. Uh, and then if I need to get aggressive, I will switch to Ballastol. Um, if I have to get more aggressive, I'll take a penny and you, I like to try and find an actual copper penny. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. And, and just rub that penny on the surface rust and it cleans it without digging into the barrel. Okay. So it'll actually, it may remove the bluing. You may have to reblue it, <clears throat> but at least you'll get the rust off of it. Um, I restored, I had, are you talking about a kick in the nuts, Joe? Um, I had a one of my trailers and it was in Havasu, right? I mean, it's dry in Havasu. I had lay, I had all, I had, a, I had probably 30 guns layered in uh, moving blankets just stored in my trailer. It rained, the trailer leaked. So not oh. only did they get wet, they sat and wet. 
because the blank is I went in there and every every gun was just trashed. Fortunately, I had insurance, but uh, and then I, I bought them for salvage and then turned around and I used this method MP5 for the light stuff, ballistol for the heavier stuff, and a penny. And just I went through a lot of pennies, Joe, um, yeah. just flat, and I was able to get restore most of them. Yeah, uh, there goes then, that rare. There goes that rare 1913 penny you just yes. wasted on there. <laughs> yes, uh, my hair guns. Um, and then uh, you do need to then reblue it, so that is yeah. it. So you know, um, for rust, I just use hoppies. Yeah, if I got if I got light rust, I just I just um get get a little hoppies, put it in a rag, and rub it. It comes off really easy. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, I got all these emails coming in. Um, the Slingshot channel was starting a union for YouTube content contributors. Creators, I would join YouTube claims to be a public forum. Yeah, it just isn't. And it's privately owned. I mean, it's, it is, I don't see any hope for that platform. Um, and uh, it's going to come down to the fattest wallet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I don't, I don't have a wallet that fat to matter to them. Uh, um, uh, oil and extra fine steel wool, that that also does work. I, I tried that. It didn't seem to work as well as the penny for me, but I had some pretty deep pits uh, in, the, in the stuff. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. A piece of sheet copper work. I don't know. I wouldn't. I haven't tried that. Hmm. Oh, um, I just like a penny, uh, and that stuff works for me. Um, uh, this is a good, good point, uh, point piece of advice. Any brass fitting from a hardware store works. Uh, uh, it works if you can't find a brass penny. That's pretty cool. So, hmm. uh, and we have a another question here. Uh, what's the best low, lower budget, high pressure pump in y'all's opinion? Electric, he's talking about a little compressor. That's good because I want to talk about compressors tonight anyway. Um, yeah, yeah ballastol and a rag works really good, David. I agree with that. All right, so what what compressors have you played with, Joe? Yeah, honestly, um, the Nardi and the Air Venturi, the one I you know, the, the, that's it. Is that that's it? it? That's it. So, what do you think of the Nardi? How long do you have it? Or do you still well, use actually? It? I was at Aragon Depot. And Travis asked me to fill a rifle up for him. And um, I was, you know, I mean, fill a rifle, fill a tank, gosh, uh, top a tank off. And um, man, that thing moved. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> that Nardi yeah. was amazing. Yeah. It, it's just, um, at the time, it's just like, there really was no support for the for Nardi in the U.S. And it seems like they have a U.S. Um, group out here now. So, but, and um, I like, and uh, but, you know, watching your Alkin, I like the Alkins a lot. Um, oh, the Alkin. Nardi is, is a little more pricier than the Alkin, though. <laughs> That's just it. Well, the Alkin is a is a continuous duty unit. It's it's heavy <laughs> and huge. Um, let me let me give you my. I, I've done a lot with compressors from everything right. from all the inventory compressors, and you guys, if you go to Amazon and look up DMC or Davy compressors, um, the owner of that company flew from China. He was already here. He had to go see his warehouse in LA. But as part of his trip, he came out here to the ranch and spent oh. two days here with me. And we talked about strategy <laughs> for his brand in the U.S. market. Then COVID hit and it all went to crap. But oh. besides that, um, uh, I, I've worked a lot with a bunch of different compressors. The, the trail chargers, the Omega stuff, um, everything from the $200, uh, you know, Young Hang clones, all the way up to the $3,200 outkit. Okay, so I've got everything in between I've worked with. Now, I will tell you that when I was in Havasu, I started playing with some of the Young Hang clones. Right. Every one I got in, every single one did not work out of the box. Wow. I had to repair something on it to make it work. Now, I'm sure the Young Hang's a different story, and I know I'm going to pee in so many people's cereal right now if I talk bad about the Young Hang, because... They swear by the doggone thing. Fine. I'm glad you love it. Great. My experience, I've never touched one. 
So I can't talk about that. I could talk about all of the others that look like it, that are based off of it. And every one I've ever done, or those early ones, they all needed work before I could touch, before I could feel anything. Before I could get the test plug to make air, I had to fix something. Okay. Now, that is just, I, I, I wonder about a $350 pump where I've got a water, when I've got a water cooler with a five gallon bucket and it's making pressure that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have reservations, okay? They're yeah. much faster than say like the JTS. Right now, if I were going to get a compressor and I had a thousand bucks, let's just say, um, I'll tell you what I would buy. I would probably look at the Omega Trail Charger. Yeah. It's water cool. Now, if I lived in Wisconsin in the winter, probably not. Um, all right. So, or Michigan <laughs> or, or upstate Indiana, uh, but <laughs> I would not get a water cooled compressor. Um, it's 900 bucks or whatever it is. Um, but it's, it's a tank, it's a beastly tank. It's slow, but it's chug, 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 chug. chug. Uh, yeah. It, it, forever and you don't have to you may blow off the condescent every now and then but it doesn't overheat it just runs um you can fill small bottles with it uh it is okay so let's say you got six hundred dollars right um i like the design of the umarex ready air I like the fact that I can rebuild it myself. It's designed for user serviceability. Okay. It is very loud. There's the, you can't. There's no polite way of saying, "Hey, wear earplugs." It's loud, um, <laughs> uh, and it's relatively slow. I like the computer function. It's five hundred and fifty bucks. It's a good unit. Um, I also really like the JTS compressors. We have them at the pro shop. We just got some in. It is oil splash lubricated. So I like that maybe a little bit better because I think in my own head, oil splash lubricated lasts longer. Okay, that's just where my head goes. It fills at about twice the rate of the red ear. Okay. Um, it's still slow. <laughs> um, uh, so <clears throat> when I'm looking at a affordable compressor and that, I'm going to get back to these questions in a minute, guys. Um, when I'm looking at that, I really like at that sub 600. I don't think you could go wrong with either one of those. I do like the all-in-one design of the ready air. I like the user, user serviceability. There are some advantages that it's air cooled, has no water, has no oil. Okay, it, there's some advantages there. I, well, I, I like I like the compact size of the JTS because it's just it's a third the size. Right. If I'm running on my car and I don't need the converter, <clears throat> it's a little handle. It's a tiny little thing. It's great. I love it. Right. Um. <clears throat> so th those are my choices. I I personally stay away from the compressors where I need a five gallon bucket. Yeah. Now that's just me. Yeah. I actually, I actually have a bunch of the Connex that we sell on eBay because I've repaired them and sell them refurbished for DMC compressors. Um, oh. Okay. I have them. Um, and frankly, most of the damage refurbishment we've been having to deal with is shipping problems. They don't pack stuff well. And yeah. it gets damaged in shipping. Um, so that's most of what we're fixing is shipping damage. Well, um, at least it's not a shoebox. <laughs> hey, I got two of those. Uh, <laughs> really? If anybody needs parts, I've got two working units. Hey, you know, uh, shoebox is what you need, though, if you're trying to compress helium for those big bores. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, because you need to have, you have a source. I have a booster. That's something I won't give That'll up. That'll work, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's move on around that. Uh, let's see. Okay, what are some good hunting pellets? Hopefully that answers your question on the on the on the electric pump hand the compressor. I think if you have a six hundred dollar budget, the, the, I think the JTS because it's available now is a great fit. Um, right. 
we have them for five seventy nine and free shipping at Arrogant Pro Shop if you guys want to look them up. Right. Uh, if you have a grand, I would go with the Trail Charger. If you have twelve hundred dollars, I would get the Hill, and you don't need twelve volt. The Hill is a is is by far my favorite personal little compressor for just filling guns. And you okay. don't need, caveats doesn't go to three hundred and ten bars, so it's three hundred bar only. Um, and it's not 12 volt. Other than that, my favorite. It's awesome. Feels very, very quickly. Even, with, even with the cool down sec, the cool downs, it's faster than the others that don't shut down. Very cool. Good. So, um, okay. Best hunting pellets? Yeah. Let, uh, let's see, where are we? Where are we? Uh, well, so what are some good hunting pellets? I'm looking to expand... For a couple of years, I've been using the H&N Hornets. They're actually really good. Joe, don't listen, Joe. Um, 16 grain hot points. <laughs> the 14 grains red fires and H&N Barracudas. If you haven't tried the Hades and the red, and yeah, I know. I know you have them. <laughs> I didn't want you, I'm, I'm not talking to you right now. <laughs> no, no, I can be unbiased. The um, Crow Mags are a nice hunting pellet. Yeah. Crow Magnums. Um, Anything polymag, Hades, uh, Ultra Shocks are good. Yeah, up um, close. the Crossing Destroyer is actually a good hunting pellet. Yeah, I mean, I've known people. I, I, me personally, I've taken back in the day when I was using Crossman, I was taking prairie dogs at, at 100 yards with those. Somebody asked a question a while back, and I and I missed it, and they were asking about the Crossman Premier Hollow Points. I have an opinion. <clears throat> There was a day where Premier in the name meant something with Crossman Pellets. <clears throat> I don't think that's the same anymore. Do you remember when you used to buy like the brown cardboard box of the like good Crossman Pellets? They brought the boxes back, I heard. I Last time I grabbed a tin of Crossman Premier Hollow Point. Let me put it this way. I, I won't mention... The name of the company I was working for at the time. I was getting a lot of high-powered springers in with blown seals. The single unifying element was they were all shooting Crossman Premier hollow points from Walmart. Really? The reason that they were having so much problem is the head size was so off. We're talking all over the map that it was like dry firing an ultra magnum gun, it was burning the seals out. Wow. So if you have the cross of premieres and you put one in the breech and it's nice and snug, you grab another one and it's like super loose, don't shoot them. If you put them in the breech and they're consistent, fine. And a PCP doesn't matter. But in a springer, you want to yeah. you don't want to dry fire the gun. You want to have enough back pressure or you will destroy the gun. Yes, uh, you will. So uh, that is where I saw the cross premier hollow points. Now this was several years ago. I actually was at Walmart the other day. Said I wonder what they have for twenty two pellets. I bought some twenty two pellets. I'm going to do a video on the cross premier hollow points from Walmart to see if they've improved. I'm curious. I want to see. Have how you they shot the piranhas? Yeah, I've shot those. I like I those actually. I haven't. Uh, I was shooting. Oh, I have a story I could tell you. <clears throat> it's not the whole story though. I was shooting a gun. I can't tell you what it is. I was shooting. <laughs> I was shooting a gun. I tell you why I can't tell you. It's like a, it's a code of conduct thing. Just bear with me. I was shooting a gun, <laughs> and it's a semi-automatic. Okay, but I can't tell you which one it is. <laughs> it was semi-automatic, and I'm shooting this, and I'm double tapping a four-inch gong. At 100 yards at will to pop, 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 pop with the piranhas. Okay. Shooting great. But about every third mag, <laughs> it's, the probe is pulling the O-ring back into the mag, the breech, pro, the breech O-ring, and, and you can't get the mag out other than ripping the mag out, destroying the O-ring. So there's something either with the probe <laughs> got a burr on it because the air goes up into the probe and then out right. the probe. So they right. got like, a little hole in it. 
So there's either a burr that's grabbing that O-ring and pulling it back, or there's an alignment problem with the machining or something. But as far as accuracy goes, I was just double tapping that gong. It was awesome. But I can't, I have to send the gun back. So I got to give them a chance to fix it. Right. But hopefully I'll get one that works. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that sucks. Ah, uh, well. Let's see. Let's see what we got for questions here. Yeah, Rick, what gun were you shooting that you can't tell us about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. You know, part of the code of conduct that we want to set up at the GTA, and we're working out the details, is we're not going to bash a brand or, or a model or, or a manufacturer or, a, you know, I, I had a, this was a, a negative experience with one of a thousand or 10,000 of them. Right. You know, right. That one experience does not mean all of them are like that. Right. There's a difference between saying what your experiences were, were and you know, you know, and trying. This to, thing's know, a piece trying, of. Yeah, and it, you know, and and it, there's a difference between like, hey, I was shooting my rifle and the O-ring came out. Then I was shooting this crappy rifle and this piece of crap O-ring came out. I'll never buy this again. I mean, these things happen, yeah. you know. So that that's really what we want. We want to create a professional space where people could come get really good information so that's what we're shooting for there, um, there you go. uh if you want here's somebody that likes you joe uh if you want expansion then stick to predator polymax that guy needs a ten of polymax to him right away but I don't he have also right says now, this but... <laughs> or h and n hollow point so now he's off <laughs> 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 well, I did say the Crow Mags are nice, but they are, yeah, yeah, they ain't oh. that nice. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, H and N. Um, we had this conversation. H and N makes some really good pellets. They make a lot of pellets. I mean, I can, I could, I couldn't actually. I don't know anyone who could actually sit down and tell me every particular line of H and M projectiles that were out there. Not counting their bullets. I'm just talking about their pellets. I just think, God, how many do they have? Yeah, a lot of lines. Uh, Daniel's asking a question. We don't have any active coupons right now, Daniel. So um, uh, we don't, if occasionally we'll run a special, but we just have our prices fair all the time as best we can. Yeah. Uh, we don't do discounts. We just try and keep it. Everybody's on the same, same playing field. So no coupons right at this point. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, which is the most accurate? I find dome flat nose, dome flat nose more accurate with subsonic velocity. That's he's answering, he's answering other people's questions. Thank you, that's helpful. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I got a Webley, Webley and Scott. They could be very nice pistols. Mm -hmm. Let's see, best economical compressor. Umrex question. I, I think it's a very good compressor for the money. I think. Uh, I would tie it up with the JTS uh, personally, having both of them. Oh, look, I did the repair video for Umrex. If you scan on the manual and you go, and this is how you replace this, the O-ring, it's my video, unless they redid it. I mean, I mean, I, I like that compressor. Um, let's see. Let's see. You need Sue and the other to read these comments so she can keep yeah, us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things that uh, somebody's putting something up here, one of the things, just so you, uh, I tend um, not to, um, unless it's people I know uh, and circumstances I know, I don't tend to promote other people's work or let people promote their work <laughs> on my work. Um, I just don't. So the gentleman was trying to put, Go check out this other channel. Look, no offense. I don't know you, don't know the channel. So I'm not, that's not something I would just let go out. So uh, please don't take offense at that. Um, but I work really, really hard uh, to have built up the channel and the social media that I have. Um, not saying that I wouldn't help somebody out, but I want to know who you are first and what you're doing before I just let anybody post stuff that way. Yeah, you've been working you for understand. a long time. Yeah, it's you got a lot of lot of thousands and thousands and hundreds, well, tens of thousands of hours anyway. I remember when your beard was dark. <laughs> That's rude. 
<laughs> now you had your beard going a little bit when you were here, Mr. Wayne. Right it, yes, right now I got a little dust on there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll find a neighbor's cat and put a little cream on her. Pick it off tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my dinner's showing up. Um, uh, a person's asking the question, what do you think of lead BBs? Um, if you're talking about like the um the lead shot that you can shoot. Thank you. Uh, in your BB gun, uh, some of them shoot really well. They're a little heavier. Sometimes they can be more accurate, at least at short range. Um, yeah, what's nice about them, they're 172. <laughs> are they really? Yeah. Have you shot? Have you, BB, just, BB for giggles, 172. just for giggles, uh -huh. have you shot any of the Excite BBs out of your, out of your high-powered? Uh, you know, I, I did. And um, yeah, they're moving way too fast, but then <laughs> <laughs> only thing about those excite because they're 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 coated yeah they and they're not uniform uh, um that, that valve was very temperamental i mean any anything that's off on a, on a projectile it'll push the projectile about two inches down the barrel and say well screw you and then you gotta it. ram it out but uh, i did gotcha. i did shoot it and I, I i shot one just to make sure it shot and i went to set up the crony and then i went to shoot again and i was like oh son of a bitch <laughs> 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 but you know what I do need to get, I didn't say this, you know, that, that company starts with G-A-M-O. <laughs> they used to have, they used to have 177 shot. Yeah, round ball. Lead yeah, round ball. Round I, ball I, probably, yeah. I probably have some sitting on my, my supply shelf back there. I no, bought I some when I was, I bought some 22s when I was, I actually bought both 177 and 22s when I was in my infancy. And I didn't like them very much. I, they were just fun to shoot. My kid loved them. He would shoot the crap out of them. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for saying this. He says, I'll take, I'll just take the time to thank you for the educational videos. Rick. I've been watching you for 10 years and though uh, uh, through while I'm here, I'll just say thanks a million. We really appreciate it. Guys, look, I do this. One, I enjoy shooting. So uh, this is great for me too, but I do enjoy in fact, this has become one of the things I really enjoy doing is getting on and just talking with guys like Joe or Travis or Angie. We're mm -hmm. looking to get more people up here more regularly. And, yeah, and, guys and, like Angie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I probably could have got her up here tonight, but no, she's got her she's got her hands full. She's still watching my daughter. Uh, oh, yeah, she's full. She's, she's got, got, got her hands she's full. Busy. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we're kind of coming to the end of the show here. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about the new SWA long gun. Yeah, I was about to ask. I want to, yeah, let's, we got I, time. I sent you a picture. So I, I'm going to be, this is what happened. <laughs> uh, so you guys, if you go watch the videos uh, on the Airgun Expo, you'll see Joe and I having fun with a uh, long SWA. It's in the um, desert tan nutmeg stock and so oh, it's gorgeous it it's is gorgeous and, and we can still we can still make those but um that's a void stock um our cost of the stocks is running north of probably 250 well, there's, there's also a finite number of those trigger assemblies that are in that gun because they're not making that anymore oh so <clears throat> we have some supply issues really um, now the action is exactly the same as the carbine. So what I did today, I took and put the AR grip and an AR stock on that on a long gun and went and shot it, and it works great. So, you know, I think that's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're going to do for the long gun right now. Now we can do custom woodstock builds, but they are going to be custom. And they're going to have that premium because of the price of the stock. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's it. I mean, that's, that's the short and long of it. So, I mean, that's what it is. So we got some stuff coming out. Uh, I have your box. Looks like all your stuff should be leaving Friday, Joe. Okay. We got the Sweet. ATM scope, uh, SWA carbine, um, that uh, Air Force with the SWA, the SWFA scope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we got all of that stuff going to be coming out to your, uh, coming out your way. So great. Yeah. I think I might have found a loophole to hunt turkey out here with that. Really? Yeah. Ooh. 
to be continued. That's why I was last one I talked to. It's like I need no, to what I'll do people. is I'll send you I'll send you some extra chokes too. I'll send you an extra full choke. Oh yeah, uh, that'd be great. Send you you'll have the improved cylinder for just shooting around the yard, uh, an extra full for when you want to run a tighter pattern, uh, and then the slug for when you want to run slug. And I'll send you like 50 slugs. That's what I can spare. So you have to be sparing with the slugs. Hey Rick, went through them in one day. <laughs> yeah. I, I do have a line on a, we, we have, we're going to have access to a container of slugs. So thousands of slugs. So, so what um, me, you're going to meet it. Are we going to meet in Houston? Like open each other's containers up? Like, yeah. Yeah. See maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I would have sent cook sisters if I'd known you were sending Joe. Pa yeah. Sue just made some uh, cook sisters, uh, which is a, uh, wrapped like a I don't know don't, donut soaked in syrup. Uh -huh. It's addictive. Um, yeah. They were really delicious. But uh, is she still eating those good and plenties I got her hooked on. Uh, no, last time we went out, she bought two boxes. I think she's gone through them. So we'll probably do for another town trip. <laughs> so that was that was the big news on the SWA. We talked about compressors, uh, pellets. Um, I know that you're working on some stuff with pellets and I don't want to say until I've cleared it with you to talk about, um, but we'll deal with that maybe in another show. Um, and then, uh, gosh, I guess that's it. I mean, we've kind of hit all the, all the points and I want to talk about the GTA as becoming a, a, an open forum open. I say for those that are willing to sign the, um, code of conduct and willing to embed from Vimeo uh, as a as a place where we can start having that that more secure yeah. place to store our stuff. I mean, we, we, it definitely it's it's needed today, and who knows it might it might platform off and grow into something great, and Vimeo might make a whole new you know name for just you know outdoor stuff, just just to make sure we have a safe platform to be on. Uh, so uh, I just received an order from Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. It'll go out Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so your printer went off in your in your, your shop. I know, yeah, in my shop. Yeah, <laughs> it was great at the show. Every now, well, you know, every now and then the printer just starts going off with orders popping through because it prints <laughs> automatically. It prints in my wife's office and in the shop, so they're just sitting there on the printer when we get in there in the morning. So. Oh man. <laughs> Joe, uh, have you ever thought about reviewing FX air guns? Who, me? You, I guess, yeah. Uh, no, no, I haven't thought about it. Uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I have friends who have, who have FX rifles. I mean, and I know, you know, I know, you know, the guys, you know, the big guys out there with, I mean, it's, they're nice. They're, uh, okay. I do like the Dreamline and the Saber Tactical chassis. That is a whole new shooting experience. It's cleaner. Because you know, I have what? I have one, two, three, four, at least five rifles, all Marauder based and chassis right now. Yeah. Let me think about that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five. And um, in fact, I got to take my 35 in because I got some prototype slugs in. But, <laughs> but, um, um, I like a chassis. Yeah, I, I like I like I like I like my Boyd stocks, especially the the ones that are just painted. You know, not not so you can see the wood because I just I, I'm so anal about taking a nice wood stock out into the wilderness. Um, that's just me. But my uh, shooting a metal chat a rifle to metal chassis is just awesome to me. It's it's something else. It's different. It's well, it's it is one different. Piece. It is different. I was shooting with my sister. We're gonna go long again. Who cares? Uh, First of all, Brett's asking at any experience running antifreeze to help with the cooling of the compressors. Uh, I know people have tried it. I have not tried it. I was told that it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So unless you cool the water, if you had like a radiator to right. cool the water, then you may be able to get some benefit from the antifreeze. But I think it, it's... Yeah, it, it, yeah you, you need something to cool it out because it's... I mean, where's the heat going? It's not going anywhere. It's, it's still in, 
you know, the water, you know, helps, but it's still getting warm, you know. Uh, more surface area of the water would help uh, to cool off. Um, let's see, there's another question. Here. Oh, I was going to tell you that I, I forgot Cheryl out there and I asked her, have you shot the Red Wolf yet? And she said, mm. no. So we set the Red Wolf up and we started shooting that. And, you know, that's like another like level of air gunning, like maybe several levels. Um, yeah. and, then we, and then we grabbed the uh, Katron, Katron, whatever the heck it's pronounced. Uh, which is, I think, one of your chassis gun type rigs. Yeah. Okay, is that what you call a chassis gun? It's like well, minimalist and framed. It, it's more skeleton minimalist because it doesn't actually have a chassis on it. It just has the rail on it and it goes to the block. It was basically, it's a it's a skeleton rifle in my eyes. You know, it looks like a Franken gun. But um, I, I wouldn't consider that a chassis. Now, if they made a chassis for it, that'd be awesome. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't know the difference. So maybe when you come out again, you could educate me on all of this chassis stuff. Anyway... We shot that, and it it was. I was shooting the the quadrant target, and I smacked the center probably four or five times out of the mag, clean. Nice, nice. Uh, with that, uh, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, Rick, you have a chassis gun. I have. Was that the Raptor? The Raptor, yeah. Okay, that's a chassis. Send it here. I'll, I'll take care of it. <laughs> You're volunteering. I always volunteer for rifles. Yeah, I hear you. But um, yeah, that Red Wolf is nice. I, I, uh, it's that trigger. I, hate, I, I'm sorry. It's 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 too it's too clean for me. I was like, nah, there's no resistance. No, nope, uh, uh, can't do it. <laughs> Supposedly, you can adjust some resistance in. I haven't played with that yet, but I'm going to. I've actually oh, got yeah. used to. I've actually got used to like the no resistance oh there's the switch click <laughs> wait, wait. so you can adjust it for more pressure what so it takes half a breath longer to pull it or what <laughs> i don't know i guess i'll find out yeah yeah. You gotta download the manual it's probably this thick i don't know <laughs> i'm surprised the, the onboard computer doesn't tell you what to do i know right i've got That'd the i've got the programmer too but it's still the box oh, okay so we'll see that's that's the whole that's a whole nother journey. I haven't yet started yet. So Heck yeah, that's going to be, I mean, I was, that gun is just, uh, what we need to do is a Bluetooth app where oh, you just yeah. push the button on the phone. Shoot, shoot, <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't be legal for any competition. I know right now. <laughs> oh, well. That. That'd be it. But they, you know, a Bluetooth app would be cool for that. So you can sync up with the computer that way and see more options on your phone. I, I think it's, well, I don't know if, I don't know enough about the Delta Wolf if they do that yet, but yeah, I mean, it's only like two years from now, they'll have that, I'm sure. Man, what, five years ago, if someone had told me there was a chronograph and a rifle, I would have slapped them and laughed at them real hard. <laughs> and now it's like, it looked the new M3, the Delta Wolf. Jesus, man. We're either Delta Wolf's pretty slick. It's yeah, nice. it is. Yeah, it is. Oh man, I don't know. I'm becoming a dinosaur in this sport now, man. I'm gotta, I got to up my game. But up well, game you know, I think your game is to shoot game, and <laughs> your rifles, as Frankenstein as they are, seem to be doing that just fine. Yeah, but I do need one or two good quality competition rifles because we get a lot of stuff. We, we we got some pellets, and again with the we got some ammo in today that we're probably going to bring in and the pellets are, are competition pellets they're strictly and even out of a uh an axed up um disco that has been modded out really well you know i told really you good. just send it over here i'll do all the tests you need I'll let you know how to do it. um so we got one more question here two more questions goodness okay. three more questions come on guys all right all right uh okay <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to really put a time limit on these things, uh, but we're getting all these people watching. So that's awesome. Okay. Springer and 30 Cal. Absolutely worth it. Buy it. Just get it. It's awesome. That's Rick, the Springer guy. But yeah. yeah sure. 540 feet per second, but it's, and it's so it's, much fun. Yeah. I remember you in that video. That was a good, because that thing was smacking. Yeah. 30, it's 32 foot pounds, man. Yeah. Plenty of power. It's slow. 32 but, foot pounds on a 44 grain uh, projectile. That's a lot of smack. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I wouldn't shoot slugs, shoot pellets. You get the 30 cal polymags or when they're available, 30 cal Hades. 
That would be a hunting machine. 30 cal that Hades was- are available. They've been available. You have them in stock? No, these are available. They're available. Okay? No, that's I'm what I mean by stock. availability. <laughs> They're Joe. Um, we do have a container coming over that's only 30 caliber Hades that we won't see it for <laughs> oh, a few months. Dude, we're having, there's so many 30 caliber Hades coming on this load that's we won't see till fall, but it's it's gonna it's gonna be cool. <laughs> Brett on the gauntlet two, you're gonna need an adapter. Uh, if you want to put a, an additional moderator on it. Uh, let's see. Do I need a P.O. box? I need pellets. <laughs> Don't tell me what I have babies. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to stop before we get more questions because we're five minutes past. Guys, Uh-oh. that's going to be it. We're out. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Check out. Uh, oh, one last little thing. My wife is on, and she's been working really hard on a new website for Ergon Web. It's not ready to go live yet, but we're going to have a brand new website for ergonweb.com. I kind of let that poor site atrophy for a while, but we're going to come back uh, with, uh, with force and aggression to bring nice. that back. Um, and we're going to join it together with Ergon Army. If you haven't joined up for Ergon Army, please do. Uh, Ergon Army is my own social media that I run, manage. It's mine personally. Again, I pay a monthly fee to have that. Um, Go join up. It's open. Go post things, pictures. Tell people what you like, what you don't like. Be nice to one another, please. I I really need to go on there because I've been on there like once and I haven't been on there since. (laughs) Yeah, and for you, like Joe, uh, if you have announcements and stuff with regards to JSB or Predator or whatever, you can throw them up there. Just there's no restrictions. If you as a vendor are happy, I'm happy for you to just use it. Cool. Okay. So I mean, um, Airmarks, the who makes the Catron? Airmax. Airmax, whatever. Uh, they are. Um, they post a lot there, and I'm happy that they do. Knock yourself out. Dude, I know they gotta be sick of me because every time on Instagram I see something about with them, I'm like, oh, I love it so much. You're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> All right, guys. Daniel, I'll put a little something special in your box for you. I'm not going to say what it is, but uh, we'll have something going out with your origin for you. Guys, that's going to be it. want to say thank you to everybody for coming up here and hanging out with us. Joe, thank you for bailing me out tonight. Not Appreciate a problem, it. man. Not a problem. So, guys, that's going to be it. See you guys. Good night. Good night. Hi, Mom.